According to a recent survey, almost a quarter of adults in the UK are saying they'll be keeping their heating turned off this winter due to rising energy prices and the cost of living crisis. So what, if anything, can halls do to help? Hi everyone, I'm Johnny Thompson and welcome once again to the Village Halls podcast sponsored by Allied Westminster, the UK's largest specialist provider of village hall insurance and the home of Village Guard. Now, many people are worried about whether they'll be able to afford to heat their homes this winter. However, in Suffolk, a group of halls has come together with a great way of helping out and I'm delighted to be joined today by Lizzie Kingston from Framlingham Unitary Meeting House, who is going to tell us about their idea and a few other community-minded things they've been up to as well recently. Hi Lizzie, lovely to have you on the show and how are you? Hi Johnny, I'm good thank you and it's a pleasure to be here, thank you. Brilliant, brilliant. Now before we talk about keeping people warm and so on, tell me a little bit about you and the, and the fabulous hall you're involved in there in, in Framlingham, which I understand was built well over 300 years ago, right? Yeah, that's right. So Framlingham Unitarian Meeting House is um, over 300 years old and it's home to a Unitarian congregation. Yeah, I'm the venue manager and that means that I sort out the hiring of the venue and I look after the inside of the venue. And I also work just with a vision um, that I would describe as the ministry of the building. So I'm always looking for ways to help reach out to our community using our beautiful sacred space. And um, of course, one of the challenges that people are facing out there in the community now is is heating costs. And it's all creating a bit of a, a dilemma for a lot of people this winter, isn't it? Should you should you turn the heating off, <laughs> save money? <laughs> Or do you spend a lot, and I mean a lot, keeping warm? It's difficult times, isn't it, Lizzie? Yeah, that's right. Um, And we're very aware of that. And really, I think as this winter hits, there's going to be people struggling. Yeah. And everything that we're doing at Framlingham Unitarian Meeting House is focused on serving the community and finding a way to meet people's needs. And at at this moment, I feel that... The coming winter is going to be hard and that is an opportunity for us to reach out and hopefully make a difference to people who are struggling. Yeah, to do your do your stuff, and uh, and with all this in mind, uh, along with other halls as well, you've you've come up with a, a way of helping. I understand, yeah. Well, that's right. Yeah. So the meeting house here in Framlingham is already really busy. We have congregational activities such as a cafe and a meditation circle, and of course our services. And we hire two musicians and artists, crafts with the makers market, a children's drama group. But actually, all of those hirers come together and form our our wonderful community. But we still have time in the week and space in the week where we thought we might try and do something a little bit different. Um, So we've opened up the meeting house as a warm space on a Thursday between 10.30 and 3. And and is that, that, that's in conjunction with um, a few other community buildings as well in the area, is that right? Yeah, that's right. So it all started when I I was thinking about ways in which to help people over the winter and I thought about opening up as a warm room over winter. And at the same time, coincidentally, uh, my friend Nick from a local charity, Our Community, and the Reverend Chris Davey, who's the priest in charge at our local Church of England church, contacted each other and me and we'd all had the same idea within the space of a few days. Perfect. So we got together with some community leaders and people from the other churches. So there's uh, St. Clair's Catholic Church and also the United Reform Church and other community spaces. And we talked about what the best way forward. And so we've put together a rota. So there is a community space in Framlingham open every day for between three and five hours. And we decided to work together to advertise the warm spaces together, um, to share ideas and resources, and also to kind of support each other because we knew that what we were doing would be important and needed. And so we're all collaborating on this um, opportunity to help the community. And and how has it been going so far? So it's been 
it's been a really lovely start. I mean, if we we started with with vision, you know, this idea of hospitality, of openness, of serving our community and providing a self a safe and welcoming space for all. And so we've opened now for a month. We've had four Thursdays that we've been open for. Um, we have two volunteers from our congregation there the whole time. And we have bought puzzles and games. We've got tea and coffee and refreshments. We've just got, been given a microwave and a toaster. Um, we've got lovely new sofas. So we opened up um, with a massive chalkboard that said, come on in. And actually, it's been it's been a pleasure. It really Great. has. We've had between maybe six, eight, maybe up to 12 people in the room at any one time and other people popping in and out. Lots of them are people that we already know. And maybe about a third of them have been new people who've come in for the first time to see what's going on. And I, I guess that's one big challenge, isn't it, is is getting the, the word out there. Because, as you mentioned, you, you, you people you already know, but perhaps the people most in need are those out there who maybe don't interact so much with the with the community so how, how have you been going about trying to trying to identify and find those kind of people as well I do think it's hard and I think we're at the beginning of our journey here so we yeah. got in touch with the social prescriber at our GP surgery because we know that the people who work at the surgery are going to be working with people who might be vulnerable um, and just to let them know really that this is an opportunity that's available to them if they if they'd like to leave their house and go somewhere warm and not have to worry about heating, then we're here. And we've also, of course, put posters in all the usual places. And, you know, if you walk into into co-op or the post office or the library, the posters are there. But actually, and on Facebook as well, which yeah. has had a really lovely reception. But I think actually probably the most important thing is that we've got a banner and a board outside and it just says it's warm. There's free tea and coffee. Yeah. come on in and actually i think probably everyone who's come in has been have been people who are passing by have just passed by and mm-hmm. seen that fan, fantastic i guess an, another challenge is is the cost to you <laughs> uh, you have to pay for this for this heating as well throughout the winter um how how are you finding that yeah so yeah i think the messaging is the biggest challenge but of course we're making an investment financially in heating our building at a time when there isn't a hire in there. Um, we're very lucky that we have been given funding from the Wood Green Trust, which is a Unitarian charity. Yeah. Um, and I'm also working with Nick Cork from our community um, and looking at some other local funding opportunities as well. We found the funding is out there if you know where to look and it's worth um, searching for that funding. So that's, yeah, it's been a challenge to think about how it's all going to balance. And it might be that we end up spending more money than we bring in with the funding. Um, but that is very much part of um, part of our vision. Yeah. And I guess you're also kind of spreading the cost in essence, aren't you? Because you've got these other holes that you're, that you're working with and kind of delivering this on a rota basis. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's it. So yeah. Um, it's, it is only actually five hours on a Thursday for this part of our warm welcome project. But yeah, across the week, it means that there's always someone somewhere warm in Framlingham. So it, it sounds like something that other village, church and community buildings across the country could start up themselves as well. And I'm sure many probably probably have already. Yeah, I think so. I think that it would it really would only need to be a couple of hours, maybe. Yeah. Um, and with a, a sensible risk assessment, with some attention paid to safeguarding, uh, maybe with some ideas in terms of pointing people to help if they do come in and they are vulnerable. I think if that was in place, then there's nothing stopping any of us really opening our spaces. Yeah. And who knows where it might lead? You know, maybe cool spaces in the summer might also be a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool spaces can be good, just all kinds of different ideas. In yeah, the mind, it is it? cool, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think the, the the great thing about what you're doing there is, is this is this point about sharing the burden as well. Perhaps some of the other um, places delivering on warm rooms haven't haven't thought of that that they could do it in conjunction with 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 other other buildings and other halls and kind of pass pass it around and share the cost, which is which is great. Yeah, definitely for sure. Yeah, and. You've been helping another 
group of people in need there in Framlingham as well, I understand, Lizzie. Yeah, that's right. So our vision really was was always bigger than the Warm Thursday. So we yeah. came up with this idea of a warm welcome as our project. And that was based on this idea that if you provide a space, then who knows what might emerge, you know, mm-hmm. like what connections might be built. Um, and this is this is really the idea is these kind of third spaces that aren't work or home are kind yeah. of being lost a little bit. And communities need these places really as the beginning of something greater. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what's happened because alongside our Warm Thursday, we're now working with Friends of Refugees Suffolk, um, in particular with Deborah Thomas. Yeah. And we've put together a monthly cafe for local Ukrainian families who've come here in the last few months, of course. Yeah. Suffolk's a rural county. Uh, lots of people who came over from Ukraine have been spread around Suffolk. It's been quite hard to build those connections. And so once a month on a Saturday, there's an opportunity now for uh, those people to get together, to speak in their own language, to make connections that are going to be so, so important for their resilience as a community. Yeah. Um, And one really lovely thing actually that's emerged from that is that they're now going to have the traditional Ukrainian St. Nicholas Day celebrations in our meeting house as well. Um, and this is like this is just a real bright and kind of joyful family day. Yeah. Um, that's a little bit earlier. It's um it's on the nineteenth of December. Right. Um, in the Eastern calendar, um, and it's just it's a it's time of gifts and food and family, and of course it's the first St Nicholas Day um, that the people we're working with will have spent away from their home country, and so it it will be a day of joy, of course, and a day of community um, and sadness too. And yeah. we're hoping to be there with them uh, to help them celebrate that day in our building. Isn't that, isn't that great? <laughs> Christmas is coming early, basically. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> it is It is for all of us here, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> nice for all the impatient people out there in the community who like to put yeah. the decorations up in November to know yeah, that it's coming on the 19th true. rather than 20th. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, well, well done, Lizzie, to to all of you there at the at the meeting room. It's you know it's more important than ever right now to help others in need, isn't it? Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, we really hope that there's nobody in Framlingham who will be choosing between heating and eating. You know, there'll always be somewhere that people can come along. There'll be a friendly face, a cup of tea, a slice of toast, and a chat. Um, And it just feels really good at this difficult time when there's a lot of uncertainty. And I think we all probably feel a bit unsettled by what's going on at the moment, um, just to do something kind of warm and open um, and help people feel part of their communities. Yeah, And and we are entering the season of goodwill, of course, (laughs) but (laughs) we we should think like that all year round, shouldn't we? (laughs) Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Thank you. (laughs) Well, as I said, um, great stuff. And thanks for everything you're doing in the community there, Lizzie. Heartwarming stuff here on the podcast, as as always. <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, that's where we must leave things for this time. Uh, next time, we'll have a special episode for you, announcing one of the wonderful Villagers Awards category winners. So make sure you tune in for that one. And don't worry if you haven't heard from us yet. The judges are still at this time reaching their decisions so keep your fingers crossed if you've entered and you'll be hearing from us soon many thanks to our headline sponsor and specialist insurance provider allied westminster for making our podcast possible and whose services you can discover more about at villageguard.com and to online booking system provider hallmaster who also sponsor our podcast and can be found at hallmaster.co.uk You've been listening to the Village Halls podcast, a unique listening community for Britain's village, church and community halls and anyone interested in the vital community services they provide. We'll be back again soon with another episode. So please visit thevillagehallspodcast.com to subscribe, sign up for updates, link through to our social media pages and to find out more. But until the next time, goodbye for now.